Welcome everyone to episode 3 of Mohi Talk, the worst podcast on the internet. Today we have a special guest, it's Heather Boyd. You probably know her from her very famous comic uh, where she is at uh, McDonald's with her daughter and uh, her daughter orders a hot chocolate and a coffee and uh, Heather are, is telling her, you are going to be so buzzed. You've probably seen this on Reddit where it's really famous. And um, that's not all of it. She also does wire art. I'm going to let you introduce yourself so you say everything that is relevant and there is no private information that gets, you know, in the way. So introduce yourself, please. Say everything that you want right now. I'm an artist and I mostly make wire art and wire jewelry. And my husband and I uh, sell stuff online. We've been doing that for like 30 years. So all kinds of jewelry, wedding cake toppers, uh, custom stuff. I share it, I share it on, uh, um, I actually share my stuff sometimes on my comic Instagram because I have the people on that account are much more interactive than anywhere else. So, uh, so you've probably seen some of my stuff. That's it in a nutshell, but there's, there's so much more that I do. The main thing that I love doing is uh, DIY videos on YouTube. So that's, that's my main thing. Like if I could do, if I could make arts and crafts all day, I would be perfectly happy. Like I just got back from uh, visiting my family in Ottawa and I spent like an hour, little uh, three-year-old niece. And seriously, I could do that all day. I'd be perfectly happy. That's, that's the best. Just drawing, arts and crafts, things like that. I, I love it. How did you find out about uh, your weird internet fame? Yeah, well, that's uh, that's a funny story. And, and sometimes I have to think back because I kind of forget how it all happened. But as far as I remember, it was um, one day somebody made a, com a comment on one of my uh, YouTube videos, which was the video, How to Make Your Own Photo Comics. Mm, okay. So... so a video up there and then some guy name it, it would definitely be in the comments he said something about my comics being on reddit and i didn't even actually know what reddit was about to tell you the truth mm -hmm. okay so i hopped i hopped over oh and he said it was in comics uh comedy cemetery i think that's yeah. the name of the uh, yeah the thread so i don't know were you on there before exploding fish or how does that work uh, yeah, I've been on Reddit for um, for a few years. I think I uh, started going there. It was on um, 2013. I started Exploding Fish in 2015, so that's, yeah, that's uh, earlier. I think the first time I saw your comic, it was on a, another subreddit called oh. For Pain All Cringe. Okay, I found, about that. I found out about that one later, a lot later, yeah. I think that's when it started being, like, a thing. And then, of course, I posted it uh, on my page, actually, probably several times. And it uh, it always had great success with a, a lot of <laughs> almost conspiracy theories in the comments. Like, oh, uh, that's uh, that's for a, that's for a sleeper CIA agent. That has to be some kind of secret code. And a lot of, lots of people crafting a lot of lots of theories. Like, what does she mean? What does it mean? What what is that? And it always had a, a, a lot of success. And then, uh, and then I saw it again uh, years later on Comedy Cemetery, and uh, then I and then I saw there was a lot of other comics, and uh, I saw you did an AMA there, so it's it sparked an interest, and uh, the rest is history, you know. Okay, because I know nothing about like the the way back history, but definitely I guess that was a couple of years ago that, or maybe about a year ago that I found out about Reddit. And so, yeah, so somebody in my, um, on the YouTube said, oh, you got to go, you know, check it out and stuff. So I went over, sitting with Mimi one night on the couch and we went over and my, my initial thought was like, you know, what, <laughs> what's going on? But then we just killed ourselves laughing because seriously the comments were you, you gotta laugh they were very funny and very clever you know and I certainly certainly get the, the whole humor in it and but then somebody said oh you should uh, you should do an AMA and and I had no yeah I had no idea what that was so I said uh, I said okay whatever I'll do an AMA so I I wrote on 
um, the comedy cemetery that night, I said, it's, I don't know what an AMA is, but I'm going to do one tonight at 10 and, you know, whatever. And, and then a bunch of people started saying, oh, don't let her do it. She's walking into her funeral and all this. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, whatever. So then, so then that night at 10, I just got on and I just said, you know, guys, this is, it's been really fun. Uh, the, the comics are really all about just storytelling and, you know, my daily mundane activities in my life and uh, whatever. And then people just started being very sympathetic and very, you know, kind. And uh, I actually met a lot of great friends on there now. And, and they actually gave me critique on how to improve the quality of the comics. So that was pretty cool. Uh, did this uh, internet meme fame uh, help you in your work as an artist or did it have no consequence at all? I'd say it helped me uh, inspiration-wise and certainly, you know, uh, I love going to a lot of like comedy things and, and to me, humor is, is just so important. And so in that sense, you know, I wouldn't say monetary-wise, <laughs> I don't, unless, unless uh, you know, something happens in which way I can monetize it. But, uh, and still, I have a very following on Instagram, but they're, but they're very devoted people that like my stuff, which I, which I love. You know, my, my original intention was only just to share it with my family and stuff. And, and then when people started being interested, I said, well, why not? I'll just share it and stuff. And, And something, actually something that I had a lot of fun doing was the, uh, I did a bunch of custom, which was super fun. So, so people were sending me uh, photos and their uh, links to their friends and stuff. And so I did, I guess about, I did about 10 custom made comics for people. Oh, nice. That was, that was a lot of fun too. It's just, I mean, as an artist, anything, anything creative is, is super interesting. Of course. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Did it did it have any comedic intent when you started making these comics, or what is was it like just a, a way to communicate with your your family and tell them like what's up? The things that I found amusing, things that I found funny, and in in daily kind of life and activities, and uh, certainly I didn't expect there to be any any other people that would necessarily resonate with it, but certainly it's all. It's funny, I was talking to my sister the other day and just saying how, you know, I think within families and close friends, you have the similar sense of humor, right? So whether other people relate to it or not, that's another story. And But certainly some other people seem to have. And yet some other people have, you know, taken, thing, taken uh, the comics to a different level, which has been really amusing too. You know, I've had people like screenshot it and add their own on it. And, and that's, been, that's been really interesting too and amusing. So it's all, it's all good. Yeah, it's something that I, I often found about, especially Reddit, the internet in general, but Reddit specifically, is that if you find something funny or interesting or whatever, there will be a lot of people on Reddit who also find it funny or interesting or whatever. It's, um, it's, a, gr it's a great website to build communities and to find like-minded people who, who find the same things uh, amusing or, uh, or interesting as you do. Definitely. It's, I think it's like any sort of artistic outlet too. Like you could make something, create something, and then yet the same thing could be cre created at the other side of the world at the very same time. And it's just, I yeah. think some people are on the same wavelength and, and thinking about the same things. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So, so t you tell me, why is this the worst podcast on the internet? That's what I want to know first. Um, well, when I started uh, thinking about the podcast, I thought that uh, it would be better if it had a, a tagline instead of just a name, you know. So I thought about a lot of different taglines. And for some reason, uh, this one stuck with me the most. I thought it was really an amusing thought. Yes. Um, I, actually, I thought about two different things. Uh, first, it's a skit on the comedy show, The Eric Andre Show. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's a very funny show uh, on the Adult Swim channel. And uh, one of his skits is uh, when he, he goes on the street to annoy people dressed in a green suit with a bird on his shoulder. And it's called Bird Up, the worst show on television. So uh, that's, that's one of, of the things that inspired me because I find it's very, very funny. 
And uh, also I was reminded of um, a friend of a friend that I had many years ago who opened a bakery and uh, called it uh, Disgusting Bread. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, and, it, and he had a lot of success. So yeah. uh, maybe, you know, it, it's my kind of humor and it, it can work. So uh, it's probably a great tagline. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Time, time will tell if it's, uh, you know, if it works or not. Exactly. I just wasn't sure if we were supposed to like intentionally make it bad, like make it really uninteresting or <laughs> Oh, you can if you want. <laughs> there's no there's no rules here. That's uh that's a hundred percent anarchy podcast. So uh if you want to make it absolutely bad and, and you can. I'm I'm cool with that. <laughs> I'm here to drive the conversation, but um you know, you're the co pilot, so um no, I mean I'm I'm the co-pilot. You're the pilot, so. Uh... So I want to go to I want to go back to France. Yeah. France many years ago. Uh, actually, Mark was married to a French woman. Uh, many, okay. Many many years ago, she lives in Nancy. Okay. Through Nancy, and actually, his daughter was born in uh, in Nancy, uh, or no, born in Montreal, and then she grew up there, and now she's back here. But uh, but I've only been to France once and went to Paris like literally for two days and uh, and uh, I loved it. I'd love to go back. You want uh, like advice to uh, what to visit or uh, things like that? Do you live in Do you live in Paris? Oh uh, yeah, I live uh, near the center of the city. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So best coffee shop? Oh, uh, I'm not really fam- I'm not really a coffee shop person, so I'm not really familiar with Ooh. coffee shops. Okay. The, um, the coffee shop I'm most familiar with is the one in the TV show Seinfeld. So uh, <laughs> I don't really know one. Uh, I mean, I guess there's there's a lot of Starbucks, but uh, by any means, they're probably not the best coffee shop in any category. Maybe easy to find, but uh, that's going to be it. So have you ever been to Montreal? I have a long time ago. It was uh, about 20 years ago when I was... Uh, kid okay and, uh, my uh, grandfather took me uh, on a big tour around uh, Quebec and we we saw a lot of uh, cool things there do you remember Montreal very well not at all no uh, especially since that was in the beginning of the trip and I, and I was very sick I think uh, I oh, caught some okay. something on, on the plane or whatever and I, I had um I don't I don't exactly know the the word in english a, th- a throat infection and uh and so yeah i was very sick for a few days so uh montreal was basically a blur i remember uh one thing is that we ate bagels oh yeah with... <laughs> of course you have to eat bagels <laughs> bagels with uh, garlic cream inside uh, yeah and uh that was that was pretty delicious and also there was fireworks that day for some reason okay yeah they still do that that's all i remember that's right so how old were you when you came oh uh, i think i was 11 so um Young, yeah yeah long time ago yeah well of course they're famous for poutine and bagels and uh but montreal's amazing in the summer if ever you can uh come in the summer there's so many festivals uh, just for laughs, jazz festival, tons of things. Um, with you. We could meet up. <laughs> Mimi says we can meet up with you. There you go. Sure. That'd be, that'd be fun. But uh, yeah, I actually used to sell jewelry on the street in, in Montreal. So maybe if you were here in the summer, you might have seen me. Oh, it was uh, in July. So oh, maybe. I bet I bet you did. Maybe, maybe I crossed you at some point. I bet, I bet you did at some point. But uh, that's that's actually how I met Mark, selling jewelry on the street in old Montreal. It would be like sort of like a imagine a tourist area in Paris, like the same. It's the same sort of thing in old Montreal. So he was actually selling little wire bicycles on the street, and I was just selling like little hand painted buttons and stuff that uh, that I had started making, and and we just met on the street, okay. and uh, yeah, so that was that was that was that part of the story thirty years ago. Oh, so he was into uh, w- wire. Yeah, he's also? the one that started it actually. After he got married, they went to Quebec City on a honeymoon, and he at that point had left his jobs. He wasn't you know he wasn't working or anything, and he was looking for an idea for 
something to do and he 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 never really fit into the sort of the the work world thing so uh he, he always wanted to do his own thing and and he came across a guy in Quebec City that was making wire bicycles and just I'm sure they have them in Paris and all over all over the world they have like guys and girls that make wire bikes and just sell them for decorations and stuff uh, yeah so he's he met this guy in Quebec City that was doing that and then he checked out what wire the guy was using and it was actually it's a welding wire so a soldering wire okay he's like oh I know where to get that so he bought a couple of little pieces from the guy and bought some wire and started making them and uh, and when I met him he was actually making a lot of money doing that like him that was sort of in the early 90s that was sort of the heyday right before the dollar stores and the Walmarts and stuff and uh and then when i met him i just you know i i took some wire and started doing it and that's what i've been doing ever since which is uh which is great i mean we've had our ups and downs but uh i'm both of us so it's it works well yeah that's really cool if you can make a living out of it that's gonna be really chill yeah i i can really relate to that thing of uh being like ill-fitted for the work environment my biggest problem is i have really bad insomnia oh yeah. so waking up every day at the same time is really almost torture for me it's really really hard that's one of the that's one of the main reasons why i do my best to try and work from home yeah so far it almost works for me i i earn almost enough money to uh to be to for it to be sustainable that's amazing because i remember asking you about that when the when i first met you online and yeah. asking you about like how you monetize and all that sort of thing and i guess there's lots of ways to do it now and i'm still not quite there with my other social media stuff like i have to make the physical item to sell it the idea is with the youtube videos is to actually make a bit of money on that although with like AdSense on videos, you make nothing, you know, I think I've made a thousand dollars and I have like a million views on YouTube. So it's kind of yeah. pitiful in a way, but there's other ways, there's other ways that you can monetize and uh, like Patreon, you have Patreon. Yeah. I have Patreon. It, it, it's uh, I have a few subscribers there. It's a pretty cool platform. Uh, yeah. I think Patreon's a really great thing. It's uh, if you could get it going, I still haven't really decided what I want to offer on Patreon because people that would want, you know, access to DIY videos and, and other people might want something else. So I haven't a branding thing. You have to figure out exactly what you want to represent. I have the exact same problem, actually. Ah. Uh, it, that's one of the reasons why I, I have so many problems with starting a, a successful Patreon. It's I really don't know what to offer as a reward. I really don't. Yeah, ditto. Same for me. And like, I know a lot of uh, you, our YouTuber friends, they will put like early access to videos. And yeah. a lot of these people, you know, they have their fan base already. So that's the fans are just happy just to have access to the videos and that's it. Yeah. But it's true. Like, what do you what do you give? And and yeah, I don't know. What do you usually offer for for rewards? Yeah, it, it depends. I've seen a lot of different things, but um, often for For people who make videos, it's stuff like behind the scenes and bloopers or early access. Yeah. Uh, I, I know a lot of people like bounds and stuff who offer stickers and, and shirts. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of different things, but I, I don't fit in any classic categories. So True, I, right? It's really hard for me to find a... To find something to offer as a reward. And I think it's probably one of the reasons why uh, my Patreon has been stuck on uh, 10 subscribers for a year. Oh, it's true, eh? And just uh, on a side note, the memes, or do you call them memes or memes? M memes is the classic pronunciation, I think. Okay, so for the memes, do you actually make them yourself or you share them? Uh, it's mostly I share them. I'm kind of a... Uh, I, I see my, myself as a meme archaeologist who goes on the dark corners on the internet to find the the, the, the best images. To, and uh, originally, I, I I was not into memes um, at all when I started the page. It was more like found images, uh, kind of like found footage, you know. But uh, I I was trying to find weird pictures that people were posting online for who knows what reason. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of weird pictures without explanation, yeah. things out of out of context, uh, tweets taken out of context, things like that. And um, of course, it's kind of it kind of goes hand in hand with the with the memes, but it's not exactly the same thing. It's like you're curating, really. 
Exactly. Uh, sort of your own gallery. It's totally this. It's it's a hundred percent this. They uh, and uh, a lot a lot of people uh, like me are, are actually called curators. I remember when it started being a buzzword um, online. Actually, the the curators. It was in twenty eleven, I think, and a lot of people were starting like blogs and and YouTube channels to show the stuff that they found online. Okay. And we're not and were not creators themselves. Yes. And um and and it it kind of has kind of fallen out of fashion recently um because there has been a kind of an emphasis on the creator again. Okay. Okay. And like pe people who make things uh are are like cool again because at the at first it was like people who found weird pictures and wanted to show them to their friends to uh, have a laugh or think what it means, what's the context, and uh, try to elaborate theories. And um, and then, and it's it's really weird, but it intertwined with memes. And what makes a meme is the fact that it's shared, that it's passed around. You cannot, you cannot make a meme. Okay. Because... It's it goes against the very definition. Uh, if uh, some kind of image or text or concept is passed around enough, and it's starting to enter the culture, then it becomes a meme. That's why it's it's kind of annoying to to uh, a, a lot of times you see in uh, like in the media, like in newspapers or uh, you know blogs, uh, people who are saying, "Oh, uh, I this person made a meme." No, you make an image, and then the image become uh became a meme or or you took an existing meme and you made an image it iteration of it you uh -huh. made a, yeah it's like, like a, an example okay but yeah sort of like a like a collage type of thing in a way yeah exactly but interesting i mean if you if you want to go there it really takes its roots in the in the dada uh movement uh that was really popular in europe um about a uh, hundred years ago I assume you're familiar with it. Yes, yes, definitely. And uh, a lot of uh, characteristic of Dadaism are the same of what happens in meme culture nowadays. It's, uh, a, a, it's, it's a lot of similar intent. It's a lot of uh, similar uh, ideas. The big difference is that it's not made by artists anymore. It's made by everyone. And uh, by well, everyone, yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't mean that uh, because uh, I don't mean that it's not art or it couldn't be considered as art. I mean, uh, when Dadaism was uh, like in its heyday, people who were making it were like professional artists who devoted their existence to art. And nowadays, people who are making memes are not uh, making memes as the primary, you know, thing in life. It's not their job. I mean, there are a few ones, but they're very, very rare. Yeah. Uh, but most people are, like, it's uh, people who do that as a hobby, for fun, in their free time, uh, a lot of students, of course, uh, uh, people who have other jobs, and um, that's the big, big difference. Uh, but apart from that, uh, memes and data have everything in common well i mean it's such a fine line uh, about what is considered art and what is considered not art you know and i uh, i know some of my best work that i ever did is art that i made when i was a kid in fact i was telling this story to someone just the other day that mom kept all of my artwork from when i was young all my paintings and when i was in university i actually submitted some of my preschool art into a, a art competition and and some of them won like this one piece won a prize in this in this art show and and then when I told my teacher after I said look this this was a collection of it was like three and he was like sort of insulted that I would even put it in an art competition at the <laughs> at the school but like to me it's 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 a real statement about what is art you know for sure you know you you can become a professional artist and make a living whether it be through grants or selling your work or whatever you but to me some of the most incredible art is not done by quote-unquote artists 
That's for sure. And I think I think maybe this whole meme culture is a reflection on that as well, because at what point do you say, oh, this is art, this is not art? I think there are several um, key things about this, is that what makes something art in the... It's a debate, of course. There's no fixed definition. Uh, yeah. Even if you open several dictionaries, it will differ from, from dictionary to dictionary. But in the eye of most people, what makes art, especially nowadays, is the intent. Yes. You make art if you want to make art. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like... Um, of course, I, I know people who, who record uh, their, the, the noise that their fridge makes and then they make music albums uh, out of this without too much manipulation. It's basically just fridge and vacuum cleaner noises. And who's to say it's not music? Because they, they took a sound, they, they recorded it, and then they, they put it into an album. Who's to say it's not music? And of course, we all have fridges in our houses, and that's not music. And it seems obvious to say it like that, but even if it's the same sound by the same process, uh, it's the difference is all in the intent and in the, you know, uh, how you do it. And uh, so I understand why some people would consider uh, the drawings of a three-year-old not art, but mm. in the same time, there's a, another uh, a difference is uh, also in the intent is um, there are several kinds of intent when you think about it. Like when you want, uh, when you make something, whether it is a music song or a painting or, you know, sculpture, whatever, um, what are you trying to do? Are, are you just in your mind just... I'm making art or are you just if you if you are just having fun and doing it as a hobby to kill time does it not count as art or well, does yeah. it if you're just trying to make a beautiful thing to I don't know cheer someone up or you know it's um do you have to think of it as art for it to be art mm-hmm. or it, it's uh, and it's a vast of course because of that it's it's a vast debate the thing you think about the, the paintings was more like this found art because it were it, they were pieces that I found from you know, that were created before so it wasn't the wasn't the paintings and the technique itself of a child that became the art it was more like me discovering this part of my past and and presenting it in a way of showing people that you know this sort of like Lament, lamenting over the or over the loss of that kind of spontaneity and creativity. So in that sense, huh. you know, that infused meaning. They weren't just children's paintings anymore. It was just the the concept of almost like uh, some found art raw materials type of thing. So so yeah, it just depends on what sort of meaning you infuse in piece. And I. I yeah. And uh, of course, you could say by that very definition that um, either art does not exist or that everything is art. But I think in the end, art is what we decide is art, basically. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'd, someone put a question out there on Facebook the other day. You know, what is the one thing you could live? You could not the one thing that you could not live without or. Something like that. I forget exactly what they said. And everybody's saying, you know, love or whatever, all these different things. And I've just, I mean, the first thing that came to my mind is art because art is all encompassing, really. It, it just uh, encompasses so many, so many things. And uh, the def- definition becomes very loose. You know, when I have, I have a friend that wants me to make him a painting and I have all kinds of ideas and things I want to do. And then, you know, for sure he could go and buy something at Ikea <laughs> <laughs> a, a nice you know abstract painting or something to go on his wall but to me it's it's more about like once that piece has some meaning infused to it and then it means a lot more like at my house I have so much big I'm just looking at them now ra- rather than having big sort of impact pieces I have like hundreds of small works of people that I've met over the years and oh that's nice many different techniques they don't fit together but in my mind they do because it's all my aesthetic of what 
yep. of what I like. And, and they've got so much, and they're each representative of supporting in, in, in whatever, you know, whether they're full-time artists or the hobby artists or whatever, but, uh, yeah, I'm distracted. I'm looking at my art on the wall. <laughs> yeah. It's like a, it's like a physical version of Pinterest or, or Tumblr basically. It's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And do you, do you create art of it? Well, I know you do music, but have you, do you paint or draw? Uh, I try sometimes. I'm very bad at it, but uh, okay. uh, it's um, sometimes I feel like it. I, I hate drawing and, and painting, but uh, sometimes yeah, I'll, I'll try again uh, yeah. every every couple of years. Yeah, and uh, so, sometimes I'm having fun doing very simple drawings like geometric figures, like cubes and and circles and stuff like that. Sometimes I I have a lot of fun. Uh, drawing this i still do a lot of drawing but i mostly work with wire and uh but to me working with the wires is pretty well like drawing and but honestly like some of the some of the most enjoyable creative times i have are are just like on with kids like with kids doing art and uh, collage and different things like that and just kind of bouncing off one idea to the next you know i would say even though i've been doing this a very long time I'm still a little bit all over the map with what I do because I I'm doing challenges of doing right now I just started a new uh, Facebook group of people interested in wire art and put up pictures in the group of things that they want to learn how to do out of wire and then I do a live stream on on YouTube every every Wednesday and and I take like all these ideas that they want to do and I just like troubleshoot them hmm. online and uh, and to me it's I just thrive on that you know it's so interesting just to try to I think I I really like inventing but just kind of troubleshooting designs and ideas and when I was when I was a kid I used to do a lot of things like that like I grew up in a house and, and you know everything at our fingertips to make stuff you know just and then a lot of recycled things and I remember making like a bubble gum machine out of a box when I was probably like eight years old and stuff and and that kind of thing I love you know just kind of I could have been an inventor but I I I what I don't think I'm organized to go into one particular field <laughs> like that but I love doing things like that yeah uh, yeah you're kind of kind of like an yeah. art coach slash maker of things yeah definitely it's, yeah uh, yeah no my brother my brother was uh, more of an inventor he when we were kids he had all kinds of electronic he, he was another person that just, you know fit into the mold of a society and and didn't get finish school or anything but he was really really brilliant like like he went, i remember he invented this I think when he was in school in so long ago, and now, of course, you can buy these things like binary watches and stuff. He would, he invented this a long ago, and and then he'd have like switches in his room to open the blinds, and and he had um, oh electric bongs and and photography studio in his room, and and no, he was like very very passionate he still does you know a bit of stuff but uh i grew up in a house like that where there was all kinds of like just, just making things going on yeah i loved it i think we all have our reasons and that can vary a, a lot from person to person um personally i i hate making art i hate the creative process it's always uh when i'm 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 making a, a lot of music, especially recently, and uh, really um, making music. I, I really hate it. So I remember uh, um, uh, reading an interview of H. R. Uh, Geiger, the Swiss uh, painter and sculptor who did the um, a lot of things on the movies Alien and uh, on the I, th I think in the Matrix too. And uh, he said that he hated painting and he hated sculpting. And I can really relate to that. It's, um, but it's a craving, you know. I, I, I like starting and I like finishing. And the whole trip in between, 
I really hate it. It's kind of oh, okay. like, I mean, but it's it's kind of makes sense. I mean, I I know a lot of people who love uh, going on vacation but hate being on the plane. So um, and hate planning the trip. So you know, it's it's kind of the same thing. But uh, when yeah. you're finished, when you're finished, when you have your finished product, when you're finally proud of yourself and have this feeling of accomplishment, then it makes everything worthwhile. Even if, you know, I don't know if you've tried making music in the past, but uh, it's extremely boring and, and tedious most of the time. Writing lyrics is extremely boring and tedious. Recording music is extremely boring and tedious. Writing music is extremely boring and tedious. But when you when you have your finished product, when you have your song, your, your uh, album, your symphony or whatever, when it's done and you have so, so much, you oh, I've done something and you have this... Uh, it's this feeling of accomplishment and uh, and and uh, sometimes uh, when it's really good you're even like kind of kind of proud of yourself and um but the that's mo- why the motivation makes- is the final result it's you're you're not interested in the process and, yeah and uh, it's not for me it's not only uh the final result it's also uh, i don't know it's kind of a craving mm-hmm. that it, uh, that is not always clear to me Okay. But sometimes, sometimes I just really want to uh, to take my 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 guitar or or my keyboards or whatever and to start. I I got the urge like yeah like we got the urge to go piss when our bladder is full. Yeah. I don't know, and I don't know. Maybe there's some uh, some part in the brain that get filled with uh, with creative ideas, and and at sometimes it's just it has to burst or uh, you're. Uh, and when I when I got these cravings and I don't act on them, like maybe I don't have the time or maybe I'm lazy or maybe I'm not at home, so I don't have any instrument or whatever, I feel always really bad after. And uh, and um, yeah, to me, it's more I think I really enjoy the process for sure. Starting is always difficult. And I think for me, you know, the motivation is when when I have this challenge to work out a design or work out something specific, otherwise to me, just to sit down and paint, uh, rarely motivated to do it. You know, I generally need like a challenge or like Hmm. that. And to me, I mean, the finished product doesn't super motivate me because honestly, I've never really loved my own artwork like even when I was younger I never considered myself to be very like quote unquote good at, at okay. making but the process of doing it I think that's what motivates me like like to me you know just having a bunch of supplies around and just going for it doing workshops things like that like I love that I love that creative process and and I could get lost in that like definitely get lost in that day like just making stuff but as long as I don't get hung up on the final goal because to me I think that's box people is in mind so we're doing more like kind of abs just I just want to go in and just play with the materials and stuff and not worry too much yeah okay Uh, so um so uh, yeah, as I said, um, that goes to show that we all have different motivations, and, and yes. uh, we we all we all have very different intents, and um, sometimes it's not even really an intent at all. It's it's uh, almost like something that we do without even really thinking about it, and yeah. I think it's and I think it's the same same thing for art in general, and I think it's the same thing for 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 memes. Uh, there, I know there are, there are people who uh, who do memes uh, to make their friends laugh. I know that some of them um, are into that because it makes themselves laugh. And uh, since they've seen so much, they, they got a feeling that they have to give back to the community and, and make some of it themselves. Um, they have a, there, there's a lot of people who are trying to, uh, you know, get... Uh, a, a little famous or uh, you know they want to to have uh, more likes on their facebook profile yes. or, or whatever that's yeah. also a, motiva- a motivation and um there are people who who do them just because other people do them and they just want to fit in and there are a lot lots of lots of uh, of reasons mm. uh, and i've only scratched the the surface i i think and so i think it's it's um i don't remember wh- why we started this conversation but uh that's what I think. 
<laughs> remember, but I, yeah, I think it's a fascinating, uh, it's a fascinating culture. And I think uh, like whenever I've seen that you, you've posted either memes to have such like a deep, because maybe you've been uh, exposed to it, sort of history of memes that, that if you're not someone that is familiar with them, everything can seem uh, quite foreign in a way, still funny, you could still find humor in it but not the same, maybe not to relate to it in the same way as somebody that knows the history. Like yeah. this us mem, or mean, I think that's what, when I started seeing my over and over again, you know, when in doubt, Google. So of course I came up with that loss uh, meme, the, the classic one. And, uh, and then, so now I still hear a lot of people referring to it. So it seems to be like, like sort of this, uh, this touch different concepts and and I'm curious to know, you know, people refer to that one all the time. So is that sort of like one of the ones that was around or what's the significance of that one? And why do you think that one became so popular? It's kind of hard to tell. I remember it started in uh, 10 years ago uh, when the, the comic was first uh, released and then it got, then it got kind of forgotten and became uh, an obscure meme that was used only rarely by, you know, uh, people who were um, really experts. Okay. And then I remember it came back. I remember it was in the autumn uh, of uh, 2015. Um, it was in October or November. Suddenly it came back. Mm -hmm. Not sure. Not sure why. I think someone with uh, meme influence found it and decided to uh, to talk about it again, to to share it again. Okay. And, and it gained traction really fast. Mm -hmm. And um, it has been um, it has been huge. I remember it was huge in the, the end of 2015, the early 2016. And then it uh, it faded away again, and then it came back uh, during the big meme drought of oh. uh, of 2017, when uh, uh, there was not a lot of new fresh memes. So uh, this one just had a resurgence and and came back really strong. Uh, but it it has been around for for ten years now, and um, it keeps coming back, and it keeps never never dying, which is ironic, and. Um, yeah, I think the the reason is it's that the the fact that it's based on on shapes and and the placement of characters. That's what um, a lot of people talk about is is the 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 aesthetic of it, eh? the 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 design concept. You know, it. It's a uh, yeah, it's a shape that is ingrained in our brains, and you can see it in a lot of uh, ways, or you can you know. Uh, I think it's a lot like uh, the swastika, that was. Uh, an obscure Buddhist symbol for a, for a long time, and then the, the Nazis, uh, you know, made it famous really around the world, and yes. it it it's it's happened. There is there is even a, a subreddit uh, dedicated to that, uh, seeing uh, swastikas in uh, like nature or or machines or the pattern of a of a um, footprint or or whatever, and uh, I think the lost meme is exactly the same kind of thing. It's a shape. That we that we recognize it's a it's it's a familiar shape that we uh, that we have come to uh, to ex even expect uh, in in some um, I think it's just there's something probably in the brain yeah, just like yeah definitely there's probably something okay. in, in the brain that can they come from caves you know shape recognition uh, like in the night you gotta see uh, if you're being attacked by a a bear or a uh, another human or something like that, and um, yeah, the fact that the fact that it's a shape, really, uh, I think was that, that the was that the intent of the original artist? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, originally, it was um, it was a serious uh, a comic that was a part of a a long story of uh, two gamers uh, meeting and uh, becoming um, housemates and. Uh, Okay. Uh, later getting in a, into a relationship and then they, they got married and at some point the woman got pregnant and then this happened and then a, a bunch of other things happened. It was just a one episode of a very long series of comics uh, about these two these two gamers, uh, the, the, the dude and, and the, the woman. 
that's one of the reasons why, why it got so big. Even if it looks goofy and, and comedic, and it looks kind of grotesque when you when you when you just look at it, but originally it was supposed to be uh, serious, and and that's the um, you know the the difference between the the intent of the artist and how the comic uh, came out as. And that's why a lot of people started sharing it originally, like, oh, uh, you know, uh, the, the this dude tried to make a serious comic, but he failed hard. Look at this, and uh, and yes. then I've, and yeah. then the the shape thing uh, came like years after, uh, because the the uh, comic had become so recognizable and such a part of popular right. and po part of popular culture on the internet that uh, you know it mm -hmm. it become a, a new thing. People look at it totally uh, differently when when you're just looking at the shape. You know, once you're aware of it, then for sure you could see it in in other instances. Because I know at one point I'd done a parody about the lost comic just when I discovered about it, and uh, I I even forget what the whole thing was about. But the first criticism that about the comic was, oh, it doesn't even have the right line shapes to it. And I was like, <laughs> okay, well, whatever. <laughs> it's all good. But uh, no, it's true. I mean, things can get interpreted uh, in many different ways, for sure. It's, uh, it's interesting how people, uh, how people approach it. And, uh, like, and like you said, something that was intended to be very serious at the beginning. And, and I think that's exactly what happened with my comics. Not that they were intended ever to be serious, but I think people maybe thought that they were either intended to be serious or intended to be funny type of thing. And so in that way, they became very easy to uh, ridicule, ridicule in a way because they were, uh, I think people interpreted it in a way that, uh, you know, put it into words, but just they created uh, they different intent for them. I think that's it. And when really they were just storytelling type of things. Yeah, I think that's um, that's uh, uh, layers basically. The the layers start to to pile up. That's what happened with uh, loss. Uh, at first, at first it was just a serious comic. Then people made fun of it. Uh, then the artist got upset that people made fun of it. So of course people made even more fun of it, and it yes. be and it became famous around the whole internet because of this whole thing. And and then it was used in meme, and it was you know the the characters were changed or anything, and, yeah. and and then years later there was the the thing with the the lines and the shape that started bec becoming its own thing, so and then uh, the meme became ubiquitous and you started seeing it all the time everywhere because it's, it's so simple, so it's so easy to do and you can transform. Uh, and copy it and combine it with every meme that is already exist in existence. And so that created a new layer because a lot of people started getting upset at it because it was so everywhere all the time. A lot of people were, were tired and angry of seeing it so, uh, so often. So then people started making fun of these people who got angry and it created a new layer and, and, and like... Be and like being upset at loss is kind of now its own meme. So it's it's uh, it's such a lot of uh, it's a lot of things that are in this thing, and that's why it's so potent. And yeah, so, exactly. Um, it it keeps getting better uh, each time a new yeah. layer is added. And um, I've noticed I, I've noticed recently there was another wave of them being of it being shared. Uh, yeah. So it just, it seems to really it's like waves really it comes yeah. and goes. Yeah. Exactly. It's really true. And it's uh it's like the ocean, it's waves, it's strata. And um I think with your comic it was kind of the same thing uh because uh, there was like different reactions to it and they kind of not really clash with each other but uh it yeah. was it was funny how a lot of people reacted really differently uh to it. Um there was a lot of people who were like what does this mean and uh trying to uh, trying to um, interpret what it was a lot of people just found it goofy and, and weird a lot of people are were upset at it it's like oh uh, is that an, uh, an attempt at comedy oh those damn baby boomers uh, they're trying to imitate our memes but they're, they're really yeah. bad at it and uh, oh is this supposed to be funny uh, then I don't want to be funny anymore uh, 
and um, and there were even a, a small amount of people who were who were like convinced that it was some kind of code, some kind of uh, cri- <laughs> cri- cri- cryptid message from a, a religious cult or something like yeah. that, or a yeah. or a secret organization trying to you know wake a sleeper agent or something like that, and uh, and so I think that's why uh, that's why it got shared so much. Because every person saw a different thing in it, and uh, that's what that's uh, usually when you can kind of make it your yours in a, yeah. in a in a way or another. And yeah. uh, every a lot of people made it their own joke because uh, because there was a lot of different interpretations of what is this, why does what does it mean, and why was it created, and that's why it got kind of big at some point. I remember seeing you know various reactions like people that just you know it just pissed them off and then other people that found it amusing and I know at first when people people were saying on Instagram that they liked my comics and liked my work I was sort of surprised because I really had no idea that anybody would find any anything valuable or interesting in it and then and then I realized you know that that some of it is relatable yeah and You know, like you said, there's people all over the world that have the same sense of humor, so that's totally uh, normal to find people that you resonate with. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've loved the parodies of a lot of people that have, have done. Actually, someone DM'd me the uh, one the other day, and it was, I totally didn't get it at all, but it was in the four panel, the four panel cringe one. Yeah. I guess it was okay. very recently. I'm just going to open. I'm just going to open my iPod because I forget which one it was, but yeah, no, it's very, it's been, it's been very amusing. So I've definitely enjoyed it here. I'm going to open it up. That's always, that's always cool. And um, I would say when people embrace the meme, because yes. I've seen in the past people being really, really upset at being made fun of, or, or, you know, a lot of people cannot take criticism or, or jokes and, um, There are people who have who had their careers uh, destroyed uh, because of that. Because uh, of course, not people who were who had a career uh, completely different, but people who were like internet funny men, you know, uh, people who telling jokes on YouTube and stuff like that. And um, so, in, in that in that kind of case, you really have to embrace the meme because a lot of your audience is likely to be part of the of the meme movement of the of the culture and uh, and and I remember I don't remember who that was but I remember there was one guy who got uh, mocked in a meme and it w- it was like a YouTube comedian you know of course if you're like a, an accountant in a bank then who gives a shit about how you react but um, exactly but a funny funny dude uh, who who told jokes on YouTube got upset at this And that that completely destroyed his uh, his YouTube career, and uh, oh jeez, every every yeah. of these sub- subscribers started leaving. Like, uh, oh wow, it was uh, it was insane. And the guy was uh, went from I don't remember. I think he had more a million, one more of a million subscribers. And, oh really? Uh, uh, yeah, and I think the the a couple of weeks later he had like a thousand because everyone just left. Um, hey, that's pretty radical. Yeah. No, I mean. At first, like when I first saw it, I had I had a sort of thought that, you know, oh, should I keep it, keep things professional? Because I do, I mean, I do have a business. I, I sell wire, you know, stuff and to people that, to high-end weddings and things like that. But then on, an, and then on another hand, I said, well, as an artist, you know, why should I care what people think anyways? It doesn't really, even, even professionally, like, I don't think people correlate the two things anyways, but even if they did, it doesn't really matter when you're, you know, when you're an artist, it really, uh, any things that uh, it shouldn't affect. I think what a lot of people realize is that you cannot fight it. You should not fight it because you cannot, you cannot fight it. You cannot win. There are too many people on the internet and uh, there are too many like-minded people who will, uh, um, exactly. I, it's kind of like, uh, I, I don't know if you're uh, if you know about the Streisand effect. Streisand effect. The Streisand effect. Yeah, I, I you heard about it. I've heard of it. Tell me what it. Tell me what it is. Uh, basically, it was in the early days of uh, Google Earth, you know, and um, when the the Google robots started taking pictures of everything around the world, and um, there was this um, this celebrity called Barbara Streisand, uh, who got really really. Her. 
Excuse me? I grew up watching her movies, yeah. Okay. So uh, I didn't know she made movies. I, sh I thought she was a singer. But, oh, she uh, did both. She did both, yeah. Okay. And uh, basically at the time, like, uh, the whole earth uh, had pictures taken of it. So basically no one cared and everyone embraced the, the technolog technological marvel that was Google Earth. But there was, yeah. this, one, there was this one person called Barbara Streisand, um, uh, who is a celebrity, and he, who got really, really upset uh, that the, um, the, the, the satellite took a picture of her house. Oh, jeez. And uh, she, she tried to sue them, to, to, to take them to court, to uh, get them to remove the picture. And, uh, you know, the, she made a whole fuss about it in, in the press and everything. Oh. She, she called journalists and, and everyone. And so uh, because of that, uh, her house beca became uh, an Internet meme, <laughs> a, 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 ce a celebrity in itself. Of course it did, yeah. And it, become the, it became the international sport to go look the house of Barbara Streisand on, on uh, Google Earth. What is the most funny about that is that nobody knew that it was her house. I mean, the address, uh, the, her address had been kept a secret, uh, except from, you know, her agent and a couple of producers. And nobody could have known that it was her house if they are just, let, you know, sift through the, the satellite pictures. Uh, nobody could have could have uh, seen this random house in the middle of other houses and and say, oh, this is Barbara Streisand's house. She gave the location by making a fuss about it. She, exactly. She, she told, oh, this is my house. And by the way, I don't want people to look at it. And so uh, her house okay. became a huge thing, and everyone everyone knew uh, because yeah. of that where she lived and what her house looked like. And, and uh, so that's what it's called, the Streisand, the Streisand effect. effect. That's too well, funny. When you find something uh, on one of you find uh, something on the internet that is kind of you know obscure and and nobody knows about it, and you say, oh, uh, this, that's mine, and I don't want people to look at it. I don't want people to know about it, and it becomes huge. Exactly. Like, um, and um, I, my only concern when that happened with the comics was, of course, for my daughter, that because she had her, I had her photos in my in my comics, and occurred to either of us that they would have, you know, kind of gone viral on the internet. And so, and that I found out about it, I actually deleted all of her, all the comics that had her picture in them. Okay. And I ended up, uh, for, for a couple of weeks, you know, she just was, like, not involved at all. But because a lot of them are based on our rapport and our banter and, and things like that, we came to a compromise that now I replace her face with a bitmoji. No, that's uh, that's actually exclusive information for you listening at home. Well, I, there you go. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen a bunch of people on the internet, uh, I think it was on Reddit, but I'm not sure, recently discuss exactly about this like oh did you did you uh did you notice that uh, all the uh, all the pictures of her, of her daughter have uh, disappeared and now it's only bitmoji why do you think that is that's weird maybe she killed her daughter and she hid the body <laughs> in her basement and i saw i saw a lot of people discuss about this recently so now everyone knows now that I mean, you heard it you heard it first <laughs> Yeah, so uh, so that was you know I I am a good mom some of the time so so I did respect <laughs> her I did respect her privacy and all those so all those comics that have her face in them are we have a private Instagram account just for me and her and a few friends and so they they're still they're still around but and you know unfortunately there are a few that slip through the cracks of course the classic one with the coffee is still out there so she's the picture still comes up now and then because i think people have saved it and then of course they re-screenshot it and send it and then and like you said i think you had said and you had re, uh, done a about the evolution of mem memes or something and you had talked about how a meme it is but it's one where you it screenshots so much that it becomes pixelated oh yeah you had a, you had a term for that Deep fried memes. Is that what it's called? Um, it's not an official name, but th that's what most people call it. Some people, yeah. some people call it nuked memes. Nuke and, uh, oh yeah, nuked, like microwave or just nuked. Yeah, yeah. No, both. but um, yeah, I, I love that video. But so, so I have one in my hand right now. Then actually, there's a guy. His name is uh, Socio Cringe on Instagram. So oh yeah, I know him. 
pretty cool. He DM'd me the other day and he said, you know, he said he's one of my comics came up on the um, four panel cringe mm -hmm. to give me the heads up. So sometimes people will message me and send me these things. And he said, oh, I don't want to offend you, but here's so. So it's the it says you. So it's got the same three panels. It's you are going to be bad. You drank a lot of hot chocolate coffee, but I mixed them. And then the last panel says, I I am going to firebomb an abortion clinic. Yeah. Did so you this, see that one? I saw this one a lot. I saw a lot of different ones uh, recently. Yeah. Oh. On, uh, on, on Instagram, it's it's quite popular. Okay. Educate me. <laughs> what, what exactly is the, uh, does it, is it supposed to mean? I mean, I. You know what? Your guess is as good as mine. I have no idea. Oh, it no, is. Okay, good. I have I, no idea. I have no idea. I was wondering if it was referring to something else. And and so I res I replied to him that, um, you know, I have no problem with abortion jokes. In fact, I made I made hanger earrings for a local comedian that tells abortion jokes all the time. But I just, sometimes I feel a little clueless. I didn't know what it meant. But then maybe nobody knows. Yeah, that's what I think. I'm, 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 that's my main theory. Uh, uh, that's my main hypothesis about this uh, iteration. I, I, I think it started as a random, you know, joke, and then it stuck for some reason. And maybe it's a, a tie-in with uh, people who okay. thought you were a. Uh, this was a code from some religious cult, and uh, so who knows? Who really knows? I don't know how it started. I've seen it a bunch of times on Instagram, but I don't know how it started and why and what does it mean. It's just uh, one of these weird things that are... so it's it's referring to something else that I have no clue what it is, which is which is all good, you know. It's just yeah, it's a lot of memes recently are like that. I don't know if you've seen there's one that is huge right now. Uh, it's um, an uh, this this image that um, that is a mix of Lord Farquaad from Shrek, uh, the YouTube Let's Player Markiplier and uh, Mark Zuckerberg, and it's just a, a mishmash of their faces and bodies and uh, the letter E, and it's just, oh, okay. uh, and it's, it's huge right now, it's all over the internet, I've seen it everywhere on Tumblr, Reddit, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you name it, and uh, I have no idea where and how and why it started, but, you know, it's just, it's a thing now. So you just you go with the flow. Yeah, that's it. So you, you shared it on yours already? I've shared it a, a fuck ton of times already because <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of different ones. Yeah. And, uh, and, and there's, a, 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 you know, it's, uh, it has been uh, combined uh, with a lot of different uh, memes already. And, and I don't know how it started, but yeah, it's... Uh, Lord for Quad from Shrek mixed with Markiplier and it, there's just letter E, and um, that's that's the new thing. That's the new. That's the hottest meme of the spring. That's it. There's always the new thing, and then of course that one with the, the guy walking with the girl, looking behind him at the other girl. Oh yeah, that was big uh, in 2017. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've seen that one a lot too. Mm, that was one of that, this one was really good because uh, you can transform it in a lot of different ways. It's oh, most of the time the, the the best memes are the ones that can stand by themselves, and usually yes. usually those are a text version or centered around text, like copy paste does or green text or this kind of thing, uh, and or tweets. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of great ones are, are the ones that are uh, that can uh, undergo a lot of transformation and still retain some of their identity so uh, you know what it is and you know what it's mixed with and and it it, it becomes a new uh, thing but it's still you know uh, recognizable and um, this one was really good because of that because it's uh, I've seen a lot of different versions of it that were um, uh, really different from each other, and uh, uh, you can make a, lo a lot of funny stuff. Yeah, um, no, I I even had fun with that one too. So I I I mean, there's so many that I could you know use if I wanted to go that route. You know, it would be so easy to go that route and do that. But it's rare that one comes up that I say, oh, I want I you know I got to play with that one. But the other one that I that I'm seeing recently that I really like is the one where the like there's the a figure and then half of it's like pixelated like sort of like the soundcloud 
I yeah. guess it's based on the SoundCloud uh, yeah, logo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, yeah. it's based on a, a Marvel movie called Infinity War that is uh, really hot in theaters right now. It's a superhero comic book thing. I'm not into superheroes or comic book, but uh, okay. it's this movie is huge uh, with nerds. It's basically the new Star Wars. That's what that me meme is based on, is the disintegration thing. Uh, yeah, because in that movie... Uh, spoilers, by the way, if you haven't seen it, there's, there's going to be spoilers. Um, so uh, there's a big evil dude called uh, Thanos. And um, basically, uh, he decides that there's too many people on Earth. So uh, he finds a magic uh, glove. And uh, with this glove, uh, he makes half of the human population on earth uh, disappear and so uh and so yeah he basically say oh there are too many there are too many people on earth that's not good so i found this uh it's kind of oven mitten uh, yeah. <laughs> with uh, with the uh, rocks on it for some reason and uh you know i know nothing about comic books and superheroes but i think it's pretty accurate and uh so he decides to make half of the he decides to kill Half the people on Earth, so the other ones will have uh, more more food and resources available, which is completely retarded because it could just make the Earth like twice as big or uh, make twice as much food. But no, he's a uh, he's a villain, and uh, he pre pretends he pretends to have a, a good cause. But uh, and when th he killed the people, they disappear. Uh, they turn to dust, and uh, so half of the Earth people turn to dust in this fashion, you know. Um, so that's why it became a meme. It's uh, it's based on this movie. Yeah. No, I like I like the aesthetic of it. It's it's, yeah. it's very cool. Yeah. yeah. It looks nice. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's really really what? easy to do with uh, any any photo manipulation software. So uh, that's why it became so popular. Also. I don't think I'll go that route, but I I'm certainly appreciating them. And and what about the milkshake? Oh, the milkshake. How long has that been going? The very expensive milkshake. I remember when I created it. It was um, in June of, of last year. So it's been a year now. Yeah. And um, I don't remember exactly uh, what happened. But basically, you know, I spend a lot of time every day on, on a lot of websites, especially Reddit and Tumblr and sometimes 4chan and Twitter and, and Facebook to, to find the, the hot new memes and to find, uh, you know, cool, cool images or, or, you know, stuff to share. And, um, and this was during the big meme drought of 2017 when uh, there was not a lot of cool new memes, not a lot of stuff around, not, not a lot of fresh things. Usually my, my routine um, when I wake up is uh, I open the page and I post uh, a couple memes on it. It's uh, usually the, one of the first things I do um, every morning. And um, th this morning I, I had nothing. I, I search, I search on, on my phone. Uh, and um, of course, usually what I do in these times is I repost an old meme from a few years ago or um, something like that. But uh, I don't know. I wanted to post a picture, so um, I was. Uh, it was in June, so it was kind of hot outside. It was actually it was really hot. Uh, the June of last year was a really hot month, yeah. and so um, I really wanted uh, a, a milkshake, like something. Uh, so uh, I I was thinking, oh, I could, I could talk about this on the page, but how do I make it funny? And uh, so, um, I don't know, I thought a, a, a lot of different things. And there was a, a huge meme at the time, which was the bone-hurting juice. And, uh, yeah, peop that, people, yeah. So, uh, people drinking bone-hurting juice. And uh, so, I, I thought um, something like that, but maybe more, uh, more common, but more weird. Because bone-hurting juice is something like completely weird and absurd. But I, I wanted something that was absurd, but not as much. Um, for I don't remember exactly what the thought process was, but I had just woken up, so uh, I was still half asleep, so it was kind of a blur. And um, yeah, I thought a milkshake that is so expensive that few people can afford it. 
I think I think it was a, uh, it was meant to be a reference to this uh, BuzzFeed uh, uh, show that called Worth It, where uh, they taste uh, uh, a lot of uh, like. Uh, uh, oh, we're gonna t taste a eight dollar steak, and then we're gonna ta uh, taste a thousand dollar steak and see uh, if the most expensive one is worth it. Uh, you've probably seen it; it's uh, huge on YouTube. And so uh, they taste the thing, and um, um, I don't know. My my girlfriend was uh, watching this a lot at the time, and all these ideas like collided in my head, and so um, that's how it started. Uh, I I created some some kind of character who had the the urge for um, drinking a very expensive milkshake. Yeah. So, so did it take off or was it more on your own side? Uh, it didn't really take off, but I've, I've seen a, a bunch of other Facebook pages that posted it. So it, uh, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, um, it didn't go out of Facebook. I'd never seen it out of Facebook, as, except on um, the Know Your Meme database, which is a website that... Uh, that uh, takes um, kind of an encyclopedia of uh, all the memes uh, that are um, relevant on the internet. So uh, it got its own page uh, in a in a in a few days, but that was it. It didn't. It never really went outside of Facebook. It's more. It's it's yeah. not really it's not really a meme. Uh, even I um, according I, to what you were saying about the meme not being intentionally a meme. So it's yeah. It doesn't kind of fit the criteria of, of what some of them should be, I guess. Yeah, but uh, when I posted it on my page, I said, new meme, very expensive milkshake. And it was, me it was meant as a joke and as, uh, you know, it was, meant, uh, it was meant to be ironic. But uh, a lot of people, a lot of my fans uh, took it very seriously and started to make a lot of uh, very expensive milkshake memes and they and they sent dozens to me every day so i felt like i had to post them because oh it was just meant as a joke originally but apparently people like that so i decided to roll with it you know to embrace so, to, to embrace exactly. the meme because that's exactly. what you that's what you do and uh but no it never got really outside of facebook except if it has its own page on know your meme you have a lot of power Maybe not a lot, but I have a, a little. <laughs> a little power. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I was really surprised that you had a name for your fans because I hear YouTubers do it all the time. And I don't know. Is it, But you say it in an ironic way. I think yeah. they, say it, they say it in a more condescending way. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's, uh, to me, it sounds condescending, but maybe not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I so think how, the, the worst one I've seen or heard is um, John Green, who, who calls his followers uh, uh, Tumbly Poos. Oh, jeez. Which is oh. absolutely, absolutely <laughs> awful. Yeah. Uh, but uh, apart from that, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah there's, the, there's the PewDiePie army also. From, from oh, PewDiePie. okay. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's a, maybe a little more, uh, yeah, <laughs> a that's little more acceptable. But, that's but definitely I, um, ironic, though. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. At first, I started doing it ironically. Yes. And it, it was a reference to the song uh, "Master Exploder" from okay. the band, from the band Tenacious D, so a, a comedy okay. band who makes funny songs, and um, and so a lot of people understood the reference and thought it was mm -hmm. cool. Uh, yes. Because, uh, because they like the band, or uh, you know, and uh, so it kind of stuck because of that. And I'm I'm using it. Okay. Once in a while, but always, yeah. always ironically, it's uh, but it's not you don't, I say yeah, regularly. exactly. You don't open your YouTube videos with "Hello, my beautiful exploders" or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> now that would be ironic. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would be. But yeah, yeah one of, one of the reasons is is what that I'm I'm uh, trying to attract new viewers all the time, and I'm not. Yes. Uh, I don't want to yeah. be, but that's that's actually a huge. I'm I'm making a video on. I mean, I mean, I'm, I have a project, a video on this, at this very moment. I, I'm okay. working. On, I'm working on that. It's um, I, I call it the entertainer's dilemma. Is that when you make a new thing, whether you're a band and you make a new song, or whether you are um, 
uh, a YouTuber and you make a new video or, or you know, whatever thing like that, or even a, a director who makes a new movie or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it's when you make a new thing, what do you prioritize? Attracting a new audience or mm -hmm. ple or pleasing your fans. Yes. And, and it's so, there's always, I don't know for you, but there's always this dilemma for me. Uh, like when I make a new thing, uh, I've tried to not make it too obscure. So, yeah. it, so it will be accessible to maybe new people. But I, I also, I always keep in mind uh, a lot of my followers that I've been here for years now that have been very, very, I, I wouldn't say devoted, but, lo but loyal. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I'm always trying to um, reward uh, these people. And um, it's, uh, I mean, it's not specific to myself, of course. I mm -hmm. mean, a lot of different entertainers and, and creative people have the same dilemma, I think. Yeah. And so yeah. I, I've been thinking about this recently. Well, to me, it's all about being consistent. And I certainly know on YouTube, that's something that that uh, is stressed. If you want to, you know, create sort of a yeah. following on YouTube is to be very consistent and almost to the point of becoming mechanical in a way, like like having a script to the point of having a script. I mean, but what I what I do is a little different because I'm actually, you know, teaching people techniques you know wire techniques and things like that so in that sense it's good to have something very predictable and very like uploading the same day every week and and saying the same kind of things and I think in that sense it's important but for someone you like you that's doing something very different and almost eclectic in a way but yet you your style comes through at the same time so I think it's not necessarily as important as long as you have something that's Uh, recognizable and you, I mean you're usually in your videos so definitely you're yeah. recognizable and the style is definitely recognizable uh, uh, as well I think it I, I think it's it's really um, a thing um, yeah I think you 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 really you nailed it and you hit the nail on the head uh, I think when the style comes through yeah uh, that's how it because when you're trying to please your audience you can mm -hmm. become trapped Yeah. Uh, in that, in making the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And because of that, your own audience can turn on you because they've, oh, you, you have, bec you have become stale now. You have yeah. become repetitive. Uh, you make all of the same videos. And I see this on every channel. If a YouTuber does the same kind of videos all the time, people are like, oh, he's doing the same videos all the time. And yeah. if they're if they're trying to do something new, it's like, oh, uh, I miss the old uh, videos. I miss the old style. It's different now. And um, so I think maybe if you were like, it's not really, it's not really your audience's fault. Uh, maybe maybe it's your fault if you uh, mm. if if you have these kind of reactions. I mean, there's all there will <clears throat> there will always be people who say that but if it's the majority of people who start saying that or even a, a sizable amount uh, yeah. maybe maybe you failed as a creator to have a, a style yeah, and uh, exactly. and so uh, yeah that, that's maybe that maybe the, is the um, uh, the the final point uh, that needs to to, to to be understood and uh, if you, yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's, you, you need to let your style go through and um, yeah exactly yeah uh, I think it's uh, it's just kind of the same debate as making a uh, comedy for the sake of comedy. So, like, so like you've made a thing, or making comedy to make people laugh, yeah, or making comedy because you have things to express, or making comedy because it's natural to you and you don't want to do anything else. Or and uh, depending on your intent and how you're doing things and why you're doing things. Uh, it, it will come off really different, even if you're doing the same thing. Yeah, no, it's it's true. And that's that's why I, I like having different platforms. Like I have four, di four different YouTube channels for four different things. You know, I have one that's more for entrepreneurs and one that's for The Wire and then one going to live music and live comedy and posting that. And then I even started one that I call Heather Boyd Comics that's just random stuff because sometimes you just want to 
make random stuff and it doesn't really matter if people see it or not you just want to create it so at least I have a I have a home for that type of thing you know whether people can resonate with it or not it doesn't really matter it's as long as you could get it out of your system that's that's the main thing you know yeah I think uh, I think that's nice I think that's uh, um, something l that we are lucky uh, to be small creators because uh, you you and me were like we're small we're we're on the map we have an audience yeah. but it's not huge and uh, so we are creators with an audience but at the same time we are audience to a lot of I don't know musicians youtubers yeah. tv shows or whatever and, uh, and 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 so it you you have the time uh, to have these kind of reflections and well, yeah. uh, so if we, if at some point uh, we become big uh, we i think we will make fewer mistakes yeah. because we we have had the time to reflect on the craft on on uh, you know uh, fame i want to say it's i know it sounds douchey but that's yeah, what it yeah. is and um i mean so yeah i think um a lot of people who i see making huge mistakes uh is people who became big really fast yeah exactly. i think I, that can be really a trap mm -hmm. uh you you can think but I, I i'm maybe your fellow countryman justin bieber uh, oh, is, a, yes. is a big <laughs> example of that uh, is a big example of that but yeah. um Also, I can think a bunch of people on YouTube, uh, like L Logan Paul, for example. Yeah. Or, or uh, you know, and um, a lot of people who, who get famous early or fast, some people some people see it as uh, as luck. Some people see it as a, as a good thing, but ultimately it's not. Well, it really depends on how you handle it. Like, I know I have a lot of friends in Montreal that are comedians, And I was, I was talking to this one guy and he was saying he knows, you know, several people that uh, friends of his that got really well known on YouTube or went to LA or whatever. And, and they're not happy, you know, so he's already kind of set that limit for himself that he doesn't want to go beyond a certain level because he equates it with unhappiness and dissatisfaction. So he's almost like kind of put that barrier on, like, I don't know if you believe in the law of attraction or anything like that, but he's already kind of like put a, a boundary based on, you know, what he thinks might happen if he becomes famous. And so uh, like he was asking me for advice on social media, like how to share his stuff and this and that. And I, and I said to him, well, <laughs> if you don't even want to get really well known or famous and you have enough work that you're happy with anyways, because he does voice work and other kind of work. I said, well, why do you even want to bother pursue social media? And he's like, well, you're right. <laughs> Maybe I won't even bother. <laughs> so he's, you know, he's already successful in his own right. Like, and, and how is like going to LA or whatever going to be make life any better? Probably not. Um, where, where, yeah. So, but I have, I have other friends, um, actually my friend's son, who's a musician. I don't know if you've ever heard of Adventure Club. It's uh, it's like they're like a dubstep band, but they, they got quite a dubstep duo. They got quite well known okay. um, internationally. Okay. So no, anyways, they, yeah, so they're these Montreal guys. And, and so it's one of my best friends. It's her son. And so for years, he was just sort of in a garage band and, and doing his thing. And, okay. and he's sort of mid-20s type of thing. And, and so their stuff uh, suddenly went viral on on the internet. And I don't know if it was soundcloud or youtube or one of these things so but now they, they tour all over the world and they're doing like super well and and uh you know recently there was a, a dj guy that i think he committed suicide or he had an overdose or something and and but in, anyways they could have easily gone that route like the, the like they were partiers and really like into the scene and whatever but because there's something in them that is a lot more kind of practical like they've got this practical side of them so they were actually able to you know cut the partying you know organize what they were doing they invest their money in bitcoin they're like they've become <laughs> like these successful businessmen and nice. still they still they do the you know the the big shows and all this kind of thing but they're very they managed it super well you know like i mean to me they're they're amazing role models because they went from nothing to you know huge success but yet they know how to manage it that's great 
yeah when whereas some people really just wouldn't have a clue you know they just get lost yeah. in the whole scene in the whole yeah, fame yeah, yeah exactly that's true. and uh I, i in my opinion that's one of the reasons why uh so many new upcoming artists like the new hot thing uh be become you know disappeared Yes. In a in a in in a in a short amount of time, some people say, "Oh, uh, they were they, they they were a one trick pony and they lost their inspiration." But as a as you're a creator like me, you know that inspiration is bullshit. It's yeah. If you want to make things, you make things. Exactly. Uh, and I think it's more this problem, like they couldn't handle, uh, getting big. They yeah. couldn't handle fame, the attention, the uh, yeah, everything yeah. that comes with it, and that's why they disappeared because it kind of probably ruined their life yeah no it's true yeah well I, i mean it can be really overwhelming i mean personally i i get overwhelmed just answering emails and you know replying to comments on instagram and and this and that i just find it's such a it's just so vast you know yeah. and i i can't even imagine if if my work became popular what the heck i would do i mean i guess you just you just uh farm it out eh? you get virtual assistants to help you with your with your feed or what have you but uh, i mean you you must have a lot to manage like have you uh, would would you get to the point where you have to hire an assistant not now not yet but uh i i'm almost there yeah yeah i, I, get, i get so many so much mail yeah uh fortunately uh, a, a lot of i mean I've learned uh, with time not to waste time yeah. on on mail. Like yeah. there's there's uh, different categories of mail that I that I receive, and uh, you know sometimes it's people uh, say uh, just sending like compliments yeah. and, and things like that to me. So that that's 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 uh, that's fast. Like I will I say I I write a couple lines just to say yeah. thanks. Yeah. Uh, there are people who send uh, who send me uh, like images or things like that. Like uh, maybe uh, maybe you like this. Maybe you can post it. Uh, and uh, so also that's fast. Either I like the image and I say yes, or I don't. Yeah. I say no, and uh, exactly. or I just don't. I mean, before I said no, but no, I don't have the time anymore to uh, to do uh, to say no to people. So I just don't reply. Yeah, um, exactly. And sometimes people are just like asking me questions or uh, and. Yeah, a, a lot of the time it's stuff that I don't really understand. So um, I have I have a rule that I that has um, made me waste much less time. Is that if I don't understand something, I don't answer. Yeah. And uh, because uh, a lot of times the explanations are tedious and they take time, and I end up not really understanding anyway, or yeah. uh, it's not really interesting. So uh, yeah, if I if I get it, like. Uh, If if it's you know uh, if it's something that I get right away I answer, and if it's something that I don't get, I usually I just don't bother with it. No, the, well, that's the, the only the only exception that I would do it's uh, if, if it's someone uh, whose name I've seen uh, for for uh, for a long time, you know, yes. some uh, yeah. old fan that has been here for for a while. I, I try and left a lot of comments and stuff like that. Uh, sometimes I try, you know, but um, yeah, I, I receive so much mail that I cannot. I pff, well, it's, exactly. it's been it's been a while it's been a while since I lost the ability to answer to everyone. Yeah, and um, I don't know if I would really ans uh, have an assistant for that because I can still read all of it. Yeah, so that's uh, it. if if there is something important like business inquiry or something like that, then I will see it anyway. But uh, yeah, if 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 someday I get so much mail or I get so busy that I cannot read everything. Right now, at the point where I can read everything, but I cannot answer to everyone. Yeah, which well, is that's, that's kind good. of a good I mean, place. Yeah, con, yeah, con, that's a, that's a good. considering how many uh, people follow your page, that's pretty amazing that you could keep up with it because that's that's a lot of people. Yeah, I get uh, on average a hundred messages every day, so that's yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it's a pretty good place to be because um, I, I still have the time to read everything. Yeah, uh, but uh, you know I don't feel guilty if I don't answer. No, exactly. I'm, I'm so sure people understand exactly. It's a perfect place to be uh, in a way. Yeah. And what about your uh, merch on Redbubble? Oh uh, yeah, 
Yeah, <laughs> I've seen you. I've seen you bought a, a pair of leggings. Yeah, uh, they're awesome. Look pretty nice. Yeah, thanks. Um, actually, I'm I'm working on a on a whole new line of stuff. Okay. Um, uh, recently, I, I think you've seen. Um, I've started to um, to uh, sell merch with my my rats on it. Oh I don't know. no, I didn't see that. They they've okay. got photos of your rats. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've cool. started that. Uh, I've started that a few months ago, but. Uh, I don't know. It's um, it's hard uh, working with the red bubble as a creator. Yeah. It's not it's not made for creators. I think no. it's more made for people who have like one idea. Yeah. And uh, and but if you want it, if you want for your business or for your brand or something like that, it's really not the good place to sell things. Well, I can't imagine you make a lot of profit on it. I don't. I didn't actually even look into what the percentages are, but I can't imagine you make much profit. No, it's almost nothing. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, of course, when I sell a shirt, I mean, there's the, the the it's Red Bubble who has the shirt, who has to buy it, and who has to uh, to process it, to make the print and everything. I just made the design, so um, that's it. Um, I mean, I'm. Uh, what's good is that you get to decide the cut that you get. Okay. Uh, because they they have a minimum. And then you ch and then you choose your profit margin on that. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, what's advised is between five and fifteen percent. Mm -hmm. So uh, I I, I uh, decide to go right in the middle and choose ten for most things, which okay. means if you buy a um, we, if you buy a, a twenty two dollar uh, shirt, I get two I get two dollars. They get oh, twenty. Oh wow. Okay, so that's really minimal. And that's yeah, and that's yeah. before taxes. Yeah, that is before wow. taxes. So uh, after taxes, it's even less than that. Wow. Uh, and and of course, uh, there's the conversion fees from dollars to euros. That also and in the end, it's um, it's almost nothing. So uh, I'm not trying to make a, a profit from that. What I say is that it's just a lot of people were asking me to uh, make designs and and things like that. And I thought it would be fun. That's but what it. I what I say with the merch is that. If you uh, buy something, don't do it to support me because no, no, exactly. In the, end, in the end, I get almost no money. Do it for yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, no, because you, you want to wear the design and you want to, you know. But uh, yeah. No, you're better, like you said, to focus maybe on Patreon or other things like that. And uh, but um, with you, like, is it something that you do getting like doing sponsored? Like, where where does it even go? Like with regards to monetizing something like what you do, like you wouldn't do sponsored posts or anything like that. Yeah, I've done a I've done a lot of them. And, oh, you uh, do. That's, that's been my main oh, revenue source. Okay. On the, in 2017, that's been my main uh, revenue source. So uh, how does that how does that work? Uh, well, sometimes I get contacted by businesses okay. like okay. like big big like big 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 uh, businesses, brands mm -hmm. and, and and stuff like that. And uh, they tell me, oh, uh, we see that uh, you have a page. Uh, would you, uh, um, would it be okay um, with you to share uh, some uh, some of our posts? And uh, okay. each time uh, each time you share a post, you get uh, fifty dollars. But this is so, a this is a meme post. Uh, whatever. I've been, okay. Um, wow. But yeah, it's. Um, it's it must be I've very working. must be very subtle then because often with the YouTubers it's so flagrant that it's a it's a sponsored post like you it, that, that must be an art in itself to find a subtle way to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've been working I've been working a lot in 2017 with a an avant-garde comedy TV channel. Okay. I've been, I've been sharing a lot of their stuff uh, so uh, it's kind of the same it's kind of the same kind of thing that yeah. I uh, that I already share, so um, yeah. most people didn't. And also, I've been working a lot with um, some website that is kind of like BuzzFeed, but okay. more more meme -y. Okay. And uh, so uh, also that 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 worked pretty well. Yeah, interesting. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm I'm hoping in the in the future Patreon works maybe a bit better, so I don't yeah. have to. Uh, because right now I don't have any big client for sponsorships, and okay. it's, it's kind of, and it's okay. uh, really really hard in terms of uh, of uh, money. Yeah, no, that's but yeah, true. in the past uh, when I've been monetizing things, um, sponsorships always represented like eighty to ninety percent of my revenue. Ah, uh, okay, interesting. Yeah, 
that's the idea when you have a following is to do that type of like I mean traditionally it started with people that were blog blogging you know to yeah. to do sponsored posts and then then it's really evolved with with YouTube and blogging and all that kind of thing and and it's not really something I've I at this point can even envision doing because what I'm doing is I'm more selling my own products and and like I've created some digital products like online courses and stuff like that but I I find they don't fly because I I give a lot of free content with YouTube with DIY Mm -hmm. stuff and so for me I'm uh, sort of on a constant search to well now, how can you take all of this, you know, all of these hours that you put into making designs, uh, concepts, ideas, and how can you monetize that? And I think it's, I think it's very tricky sometimes, you know, it's uh, for, for a I lot mean, of artists. Yeah, it's probably especially difficult for you mm-hmm. uh, because you, you sell physical items. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for, me, it's re- for me, it's really different because I'm basically a media. So uh, yes. it's like uh, when you buy a magazine, uh, there are ads in it. When you watch a TV channel, there are ads in it. And so when you look at my page, there are, there are ads in it. It's the same thing that has been going on for decades and maybe even centuries. So it's yes. uh, it's not really. But for, for someone like you, I think probably uh, what would be the ideal would be a partnership with a... Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna give a bullshit example, but yeah. so you, it's easier to understand. Maybe you get a partnership with Disney and you start making Mickey Mouse uh, wire okay, uh, things. Okay, like that type of thing. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people I know who are um, artists. Uh, they they um they have a lot of um. It's it usually works like revenue like mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. Um, like uh, mm. s- s- I know someone who. Um, I mean, I don't really know, but I know a friend of a friend of a friend uh, who makes T-shirts, and so he partnered. He partnered with a record label, and uh, he makes a band shirt for them, and so they have a, a business partnership like that. Yeah. And so I think that's what uh, that's uh, how you can uh, um, go to ne- the next step in terms of mon- monetization when you do physical goods. It's to partner with a famous brand, or a and uh, so that's, uh, I mean, Salvador Dali uh, got a lot of money by partnering with uh, Walt Disney. True, that's yeah. What, so yeah. And it's just an example, but um, yeah. Yeah, it's. I think that's it. You just have to think in a different, like put your head in a different headspace. Like I've tried, I tried a lot of different things. Like I did affiliate marketing on uh, with Amazon, but actually I got kicked off Amazon twice. Because I tried oh. to do, I tried to do affiliate marketing by selling like wire and beads and things in the, and so you'd put links in the description of your videos, but if you don't sell enough within three months, they kick you off, you know. So, oh, okay. so okay. Amazon affiliates is like not something that worked for me. Like maybe it mm. works for some people that are like Casey Neistat, that's like putting links to what is the video equipment he uses or what have you. You know, for some people, I think it's feasible, but. Uh, I'm actually giving a like a kind of a talk next week to a group of college uh, students that want to know about how to make money on YouTube. And I'm like, OK, so no AdSense, no affiliate <laughs> marketing, like like what else can you? But, you know, I think I think you're right. There's a lot of potential for sponsorships uh, once you get known, once you get out there and and have a sort of a, a following and a persona. I think it can be a good thing for sure. Yeah, yeah. Since uh, since the apocalypse happened, um, most of most of the YouTubers I, I follow, uh, big like small, yeah, um, make most of their revenue uh, because of sponsorships. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's really, there's a when you watch YouTube, there you you see there's a lot of names that uh, that you hear all the time. Like Audible has been doing it for a long time. Yeah, Skill Skillshare now you hear them a lot. Yes, and um, D Brand for example also. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and so uh, yeah, that's probably uh, no. That's true. Are your are your videos monetized? I don't think uh, so. Eh? No, I'm 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 not allowed. I don't have enough watch time. Oh, you need the watch time. Yeah, yeah. It's it, my my daughter Mimi had her YouTube channel, and she uh, she was monetized, and then they cut it off because she didn't have you know whatever watch time, and I forget how many subscribe. I think you need a thousand subscribers and certain watch time type of thing. So uh, yeah, you need yeah. A, 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 a thousand subscribers yeah. and uh, four thousand hours of watch time watch per time. year. Yeah, well, you're you're probably going to get there very quickly. 
It's no, a, I'm, it's getting pretty slow actually. I'm, oh, uh, is I'm it? Not... Oh, okay. I thought I thought that your your channel was taking off. Uh, uh, no, it's um, it's a slow but steady growth. But yeah. uh, it's I wouldn't really ex exactly call it taking off yet. Yeah, it's I, it's growing. Yeah, I like I like but... your I like your vlogs. Oh, thanks. I, the voiceover vlogs, I love those. Thanks. I've been doing n new ones without voiceover right now. Yes. Uh, I'm. I'm. I think I. I like them better, but I'm. I'm not sure yet. Okay. I might do the voice. I might do the voiceover again in the future. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. It works. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So, what are you? What are you doing this weekend? This weekend, uh, I'm gonna do a lot of work actually, because I, I. I have a lot of late videos, especially that Ooh. I meant to. Because. Uh, it, during the month of March, I had a lot of projects that I was supposed to work on, mm -hmm. but I did nothing the whole month. I just played video games. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Basically, 10 hours a day for the whole month of March. Wow. For reasons, because, yeah, uh, actually, I was hoping for spring to come because I hate I hate winter and mm -hmm. snow and all that. And we had really cold month of March. Yeah, and because true. of that, I was really, I was really depressed and um, and kind of resentful at the the world because oh the yeah. the winter is so long and uh, and it started early too and it was really cold so uh, I thought I'm I'm gonna do nothing uh, until uh, the sun comes back. Nice. So I spent I spent my whole month of March in bed with the heater uh, on uh, playing Breath of the Wild and uh, other <laughs> other it. video games. <laughs> Awesome. And uh, and uh, yes, and because of that, I I've, I'm late on a lot of projects. So I've been putting I've been putting out a lot of videos lately. Yeah. Uh, right now I'm on uh, I'm I'm uh, publishing twice a day. Okay. Uh, which which may be too much for YouTube, but I, I'm tr I'm I decided to try it because. Um, well, yeah, I, I, I mean, I want when to, you're growing so, uh, your channel, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of backlog for my vlogs. I'm still uh, I'm still in the middle of June 2017, which uh, uh, the original concept was to publish the vlogs with a six month delay, oh, okay. and I'm way past that. Oh jeez. And uh, I have a lot of rat videos. I have a lot that needs to be made. I have a lot of let video game let's play that needs to be made. And um, don't so um. I think that uh, this weekend I'm gonna work on on that a a lot. Yeah. Also, I have, have some uh, some stuff to sort out with the um, taxes. Oh yeah, that's that's actually what I'm doing this weekend. <laughs> Paperwork and Paperwork. And stuff like that. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, well, that's good. Well, I noticed on one of your vlogs you have a lot more flowers out than we do. I think you I think you're ahead of us in the spring department. Probably yeah. It uh, it's it started in the middle of February when the first uh, trees, uh, uh, usually the, the cherry trees and the plum trees start flowering in the streets, nice. Nice. and um, and uh, now we have uh, flowers everywhere. Yeah, it's nice. uh, it's full on spring since uh, since the beginning of April. Nice. Yeah, that's nice. That was long overdue, and it's really feels good. Perfect. We're, we're we're getting around two hours of conversation right now, and uh, it's 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 probably pretty good if we if we stop there. Well, it's been great chatting with you. Yeah, same. Yeah. And now uh, we can always you can always come back in a in an upcoming um, episode. I mean, there's no there's no law that says that I can have a guest uh, on several episodes. So that would be amazing. Yeah, would that would be that. really cool. And if I come to France, I'm gonna knock on your door. Sure. And your your girlfriend seems really nice too. Is she uh is she into memes? Uh a bit, yeah. She's yeah. not uh she's not an expert as I am. She's more of an amateur, but uh, okay. uh, 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 uh before that before we met, she knew nothing about them. Oh yeah. Um, but when she saw uh my page and and the, the success um uh, she started getting interested nice. and, and now uh, she's kind of into it, yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Well, you you have a nice little family with your rats and and everything. <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. Thanks. You too. It's it's cool to see you and uh, your and uh, yeah, same. Did your did your family members like your your daughter or or your husband um, get into the um, the meme thing because of what happened uh, with your comic on Reddit? Not really. Although uh, you know, Mark kind of gets a kick out of uh, out of being 
when I put him in my comics type of thing. Um, yeah. Mais lui, il parle français, tu sais, donc euh, yeah. quand, moi, je traduis, euh, je traduis <laughs> des fois les choses qu'il dit, mais des fois, c'est pas facile euh, de traduire okay. en français. <laughs> Not easy to translate into, into English, but uh, he... Uh, a lot of a lot of the the ideas come from uh, from him too. So it's, oh, uh, that's cool. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, are we good? Yeah, we're good. So, uh, thanks everyone for listening to Mori Talk, the worst podcast on the internet. This was episode three, and uh, well, thanks uh, Heather for uh, being a great guest. Oh, thanks for having me. This was a a, a really cool um, and insightful conversation. Yeah, I enjoyed it. So um, maybe I'll have you again for an uh, for another episode. Sounds amazing. I'd love to come back. Cool. So we'll we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, same. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>